in order to run world-spanning adventures across cities, continents, and even planes of existence. Your party is going to have to travel. Getting from point A to point B is a part of any adventure and can give your campaigns a real sense of scope, like a world that your players are exploring and not just a figment of your imagination. Travel also has a reputation for being one of the more boring parts of D&D, and if done wrong, it can lead to a session that you'd rather forget than remember. In this video, I'll give you tips for using travel as a tool to hit your party with exciting encounters, quiet roleplay moments, and fun challenges, not bore them away from the table. Without further ado, let's get started. As the DM, it's your job to make the world of the campaign come alive with your descriptions. And when your players are traveling, there's a lot that you could be describing what the weather is like that day, who the players are passing heading in the other direction, strange sights and sounds along the open road. It's very easy to get bogged down in all the little details. Describing what your players are seeing is great for keeping them immersed in the story, but when you go overboard with your imagery, you may end up actually boring your players rather than wowing them. Don't feel like you need to describe every single blade of grass that your players pass on the road. Short descriptions on the weather, changing scenery, and interesting people and objects will be just as effective as page-long monologues on the minutia of a day spent walking. Limiting your description a bit will also mean that when you do call something out, say an interesting monolith sticking out of the ground or a strange creature that's pulling a cart, your players will pay more attention to it, since it won't just be one in a long line of things that you've been telling them about. Random encounter tables are a staple of D&D, found in the Dungeon Master's Guide, Adventure Modules, and lots of homebrew posts on Reddit. But personally, I found that some of the most impactful encounters during travel aren't random at all, but are ones that relate to the overall story. Time spent between towns is an excellent chance for you to introduce story elements that relate to the overall plot of your game or the backstories of your players. Sure, the party could be attacked by random bandits on the roadside, or they could be attacked in the night by assassins sent to kill your rogue, who's secretly a bastard of the king. Sure, they could encounter another band of orc raiders. Or they could cross paths with a traveling caravan of bards, one of which knows your wizard from their days at the academy that they ran away from together. It's not to say that every encounter your players make on the road has to relate to a character's backstory, and running combat to establish danger or just for fun is fine too. But especially in longer campaigns, it can be a good way to spotlight players whose personal quests have been on the back burner for a little while. You can also use travel to help you develop the overall story of the campaign as well. Presumably, your players are traveling to the next city for some sort of goal. Maybe along the way, they meet merchants that are leaving that town and have information on the city and what they can expect. Perhaps they come across a group of refugees that are heading into the city, hoping to escape the war that your players are working to prevent. Having curated encounters rather than random ones can help you flesh out your world and stories even when the focus is on travel. Or you can roll for another pack of wolves. Your choice. Not every encounter has to be combat based. Along the road, your players can meet all sorts of interesting travelers and strange denizens of the land. Providing opportunities for roleplay can be as simple as describing somebody passing by heading in the other direction. Or if you want to go with the classic, have them see a broken cart in need of repair. One of my favorites is to have your party stumble across other travelers that are setting up camp for the evening. You can have them swap stories over the campfire, play different gambling games, and maybe do a little trading, depending on whatever your players have to bargain with. You don't have to curate all of their role playing either. Just opening up the floor to your players to talk amongst themselves is a great way to turn a travel session into a group think. Your players might want to hash out plans for the upcoming city, discuss character moments from previous sessions, or just shoot the breeze about whatever's on their mind. At night, when players are on watch duty together, I like to ask if there's anything they want to discuss. Sometimes they say no, and we can get to rolling perception and moving on, but other times they have a lot that they might want to talk through. If your party is traveling by some means that isn't too labor intensive, maybe riding on a wagon or sailing on a ship, you can also remind them of any side projects they're working on. The wizard could use that time to copy new incantations into their spellbook. Your rogue might want to brew up some fresh potions for their dagger. And your warlock could be polishing the skulls of their enemies that they've claimed for the eldritch being who gives them their powers. You know, whatever they want to do. Travel doesn't have to be all about combat and descriptions of the clouds. Roleplay can be just as involved too. We all know the classic campfire ambush. Most of the party is asleep, the sorcerer keeping watch of the roll the natural one, and the goblins are prepping their bows to fire. 
Ambushes can be incredibly exciting, putting your players on the back foot right from the get-go and making them feel vulnerable, especially if that ambush relates to the story. Maybe it's assassins from the spurned crime boss you're praying in payback, or fey interlopers here to wrangle the Eldrin fighter back to the fey wild. These fights can be both tense and rewarding for your players to overcome. That said, just like Sugar or the later seasons of Spongebob, they're going to be too much of a good thing. If you ambush your party too often, it'll lose its excitement. What makes ambushes fun is that they're unexpected, and if your players are waiting for one every time they set up camp, it'll ruin the magic. It'll also make it a pain when your players start to get paranoid, going to great lengths to describe how they set up camp exactly so they can't be ambushed, always sleep with their armor on, and have the wizard set up alarm each night before bed. Ambushes are best used every now and again when the party least expects it, not as your go-to encounter when they're on the road. Of course, not all travel is going to happen on well-paved roads monitored by roving soldiers. Sometimes your player's adventures will take them deep into swamps, up into untamed mountains, or across vast plains of rolling fields. When your players go off-roading, make sure you've established how they know they're actually heading in the right direction. I usually have one of the party making survival checks to keep them on track. When your players are traveling through more treacherous terrain, you want to make sure you're throwing some obstacles in their path to let them know they are not on the open road anymore. Quicksand is a classic, but falling mountain rocks, dangerous insect swarms, carnivorous plants, and deadly weather can all provide a challenge to your players to keep them on their toes. I usually have whoever's leading make perception checks to watch out for any dangers, and I like to have both a good and a bad option. Fail the check, and you stumble into the owlbear nest. Succeed, and you find a rare plant that your druid can use in their potions. Lastly, if you want to represent several days of travel through harsh wilderness pretty quickly, you can always use a skills challenge to show how your party is dealing with the elements. Setting a DC and having them take turns describing exactly how they want to help the party cope with the environment is a great way to keep them engaged and make travel still feel like part of the journey, even if it goes by pretty quickly out of game. If they succeed on enough checks, they'll get through it just fine. Fail, and you could give them a couple of points of exhaustion by the time they actually reach their destination. Or maybe they use or lose some of their resources that they've been gathering. I'll leave that part up to you, but make sure that off-terrain travel feels like an adventure. I will die on the hill that travel sessions can be just as fun and exciting as any other one. But sometimes it's honestly best to just skip it. If you and your friends are really excited to get to the next town and face off with the boss they know is waiting there, just skip it. If your players have already traveled along this section of road once and are now backtracking, just skip it. If you really don't feel like putting effort into travel and rather they just get to their destination, you guessed it, just skip it. Your mileage may vary, but at the end of the day, D&D is about having fun. And if the destination will be a lot more fun than the journey, sometimes hitting the fast forward button is the right way to go. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope you can use some of these tips when planning travel for your own campaigns. They may not always be the most exciting sessions, but when you do travel right in your games, it can really make your players feel like they're on an adventure. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a like and subscribe to The Bard's College. I make content about D&D &D and DMing, and I really appreciate the support. But for now, good luck, and remember, Critcher Players.